Hello everybody, welcome to the round of 16 match between Kerfog and Nightwatch. I'm going to call him Nightwatch because he's sick of me butchering the German language. Um, it is a super exciting match. Uh, I use that term loosely. No, it kind of is, isn't it? It's uh, Pro Elves versus Dark Elves. It could be very interesting, couldn't it? And in the booth with me is Purple Chest. Hello. Hello. It could be very interesting, Jimmy, but it's unlikely to be, isn't it? Let's face it. It's <laughs> Elves and who cares as long as they all die. Um, we do have a legend of the tabletop with us uh, playing here, though, in Kofu. Mm -hmm. And uh, a Nachtwatch, uh, or as you say, Nightwatch in German. Yes, Nacht um, Nachtwatch somehow is not right. Nachtwatch. But I don't Nacht try to pronounce it because I'm bad. Nachtwatch. So let's just go, um, let's just go Nightwatch. <laughs> Nightwatch. Besides, the whole world speaks English, and having been to the tabletop World Cup of Blood Bowl, um, I can tell you that officially the language of Blood Bowl is English. All coaches are expected to understand English. Good, I like that. that the French must be absolutely fuming about that, mustn't they? <laughs> the French are fuming about lots of things, but then sitting on a World Cup makes it much easier to cope with us being the dominant language, I'm sure. <laughs> absolutely. Ooh, caught the ball. He's got a very nice one-turner here, hasn't he? Um, with AV up. Love the AV up. Sprint, sidestep, all that stuff, plus movement. AV is actually affordable in the, in this rule set, particularly if you get someone that's got lots of nice skills, you perhaps want to keep it around, you've got all the skill picks you want. You know, you push it to see what you get on the randoms for the um, for the stat up, and, and for some reason you then pick AV, yeah. instead of move, <laughs> agility, strength, anything else really. Yeah, but 10 TV, it's perfect, isn't it, when, you fi when you've finished your player. When your player's got everything, what what do you give the man who has everything? Plus AV is the answer, isn't it, for 10k? Well, yes. Iron, Ironheart skin now if he's a proper killer on a chaotic team. True, true. Double AV up on this catcher, look. AV 10 plus catcher, glorious. That is that is stunning, isn't it? That makes it very hard to remove. And, uh, and enjoy when you 11 do. Eleven plus, 11 plus on the blitz. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Wow, I, lo I love the AV up elves. Yeah, I really like. If you're going to make very hard elves, would you start with pro elves? <laughs> I mean, maybe right because what pro elves have is really good positionals and really shit linemen. So True. it's it's a better investment on their positionals than on high elves, which don't exist. <laughs> and to be fair, he is only seemingly investing in the positionals, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, yeah. We've got three three catchers. Very powerful, and then uh, one blitter, and, and then just a dodge tackle blitzer for the other one. Yeah, I always forget I've got a kick. Do you just have to line it up in the right place to mentor, or do you have to make it your number one on the roster? Someone told me that was the that was the case. That was a thing I think in Blood Bowl two, right? You had to make it number one in your roster. No, maybe 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 it was Blood Bowl two. I think now it just does it automatically. But I think right. Blood Bowl two was you had to make it first in your roster, which is crazy. I finally worked out how to leap the other day, as well as being completely counterintuitive. Once you work out what they're trying to tell you with their ludicrous lack of information, <laughs> it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've I've leapt. I thought it was kind of all right. I've jumped as well. I have jumped. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a weird animation, the jumping, but hey. It is a bit weird. Yeah. So. We're almost expecting here, if we go back to one of my old questions, Jim, you know, who's the orc and who's the elf in this situation? You would yeah. normally suggest that the Dark Elves are the orc, that they're the ones that can afford to stand to, they've got the stronger armor, they want to get into the fight. Mm. Um, but as you say, we do have some armored up pro elves here. Uh, yes, the problem is they're so valuable, they don't want removing, do they? Like, you know, like, yeah. look how amazing this guy is with all of these skills. Ultimately, they're still pro, this yeah. Guy. Yeah, so, like, you don't really want them. What, what would be best is just, like, a side, you know, like, a say, a Dark Elf Blitzer with dodge sidestep, AV, AV. And then he's just really annoying to punch, isn't he? And doesn't really do too much, whereas these guys, they're so good that you just don't want them getting punched ever. See, here's the problem, yeah, if you, you do enough hitting of, of pro elves, you're going to remove a few, um... Unfortunately, Captain, you've built your battleship on a basis of balsa wood, <laughs> which I suspect has its flaws. Hmm. Well, I think they're called decks on a battleship. You're right. God, that was that was pretty funny, wasn't it? I'm proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, double one. Don't do that. It's a big mistake, Nightwatch. Don't do that. But yeah, big Kevin. So, I mean, if you're going to armor mistake. up some elves, then having some AV8 to hang in there feels more like the basis I would want to build it on top of. Yeah, yeah. Because, because this is... It's like opposing forces on your team, isn't it? You've got you've yeah. got soft, gooey linemen. So then having big AV positionals doesn't jive with that. Whereas if you do it with, say, Dark Elves, then you can have at least AV8 linemen and then your super tough blitzers, then you can use that as a cohesive strategy to base up with everybody and stuff. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. Whereas here you're very much saying, I'm going to end up with four or five key positionals left alive. So I want to keep those really on the field. Which I get, but it does mean, and then hence the second armor up is kind of questionable because once you put the first one on, I'm targeting the fodder all day mm. to reduce numbers. So it has a psychological defensive impact as well, doesn't it? Because if you're trying to remove numbers, you're not heading for the AV10 plus, you're going for the AV8 plus. Because yeah. until you get them down two or three numbers, probably you're not targeting those stronger pieces. So it's going to work, you're going to keep those positionals alive, but. Well, it's got him this far, hasn't it? So yeah. it's, it's certainly working to date. But at the moment, if you look at this field, I know the pro elves are in control of the ball still and have a nice screen up. But I'd still rather be the uh, the darkies right now. Yeah, and it's funny because there was a there was a you know a, a team a few seasons ago that was uh, Diamond, I think, that he had his dark elves and he had like you know blitzers with AV eleven and stuff and sidestep and you know dodge sidestep AV AV. Yeah. That's basically how he built them. And like, but he did a very good job of like, you know, exposing those as the only guy you want to blitz on the team. Um, whereas, like, you know, positionally, position-wise, or like, you know, getting assisted and stuff. So it was just, it was hard. He was playing somebody like Mr. Page or something, I think, I can't remember. And it was just really hard for him to punch anybody except the AV up guys, you know? So, um, like, obviously that's an ideal usage for it if you can use those guys to protect all of your weak elves. So maybe that was the idea as well. But the problem is you don't want this guy getting punched ever, do you? Like, he's too good. He's too and good. And here we're sort of doing the opposite. We're using the weak elves to protect the ones we've armoured up. Yeah. Which it, it, I mean, it's a strategy. I just don't love it. Yeah. Evening, Dimmy. Evening, Wotan. Uh, yes, I have been looking at chess clubs. The next tournament I'm at, I've checked. It's a four, day, four in a day, and they're two hours 15. I think I want a clock beside me as I play that. Yes. Even if everyone thinks I'm a dick. They shouldn't. Because I am, I am a bit of a dick, so I can probably live with that. Ooh. And, uh, yep, hello, Dimmy. Hello, Beard. Hello, Wartan. Dimmy. Dimmy versus Olivia Dulac. That's going to be exciting uh, in an hour's time. Live the Super League semi final. The best you're right, Wojtel. Versus... I make sure I just send it uh, via DM to certain interested people. Hey. Um, yeah, it's going to be really exciting, isn't it? It's going to be really exciting that game. The best player in the world versus, yeah, versus some Olivia de Lac. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, Dibby can win that game, yeah. He's won four out of five so far. Well, there's a there's a level you reach, Jim, and you know it's why yourself and Artemis talk a lot about the hundred best players in the world are all pretty much the same. I'd say it's it's probably more like two or three hundred, of which there's a hundred that are perhaps a little step up, and then I think there's probably about twenty that are noticeably really at the top of that pile very often. But once you're in that top sort of you know three four hundred players, you can be anyone. You can give anyone a game of Blood Bowl for sure. Yep. And that's a much wider pool than it was five, ten years ago. Well, it's online, isn't there? It's the big thing. Oh! Yeah. Which has brought the level up. Yep. Well, that, this looks disaster here for Nightwatch. Absolute disaster. This looks very, very bleak there. He went, I mean, losing elves as he was in a tough position with the Dark Elves really starting to push that wall down on him, limit that space. Um, he felt he had to push up that right flank as we're looking, and it all went wrong, didn't it? A horrible snake there. Yep. Oof. Snake for Kvog, but reroll comes in. Yeah, eventually we get it there. Oh. Fuck me. All those skills on that team and a blockless ball carrier does feel a little, um, less than optimal. 
No! Big Kev failed the dice roll. Mm. One in nine. It was an interesting apple. route to go. I'm not sure I loved it, but it, it was again, it was just a snake, wasn't it? Yeah, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know. Isn't it better just move this guy down first, say, to here, right? Like yeah, just, it is. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely better. Interesting. Screen, screen that flank over the other oh, side. The snakes again! <laughs> he rolled snakes to end his turn. Wow. And he rolled snakes the first action. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's ludicrous. Well, there are no dice except the turns where it really <laughs> <Dice> skulls! <laughs> We've now had lit. That's three. St well, no, because things like the armor rolls weren't snakes, but. True. Visible impacting dice. That was three snakes in a row, wasn't it? Two turn enders and a turn beginning. Yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. Easy to beat Kfog, really. Just, just, roll, just roll a million snakes against him. Wait, no, that doesn't work. Um, here we go. Sneaky get dirty player. Kaz. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, a sneaky get dirty player. It's one of those things that um, people that design major tournament rule sets perhaps ought to think about making sure there isn't loads of. <laughs> all to have everybody play, doesn't it? I see what you've done there, PC. Yeah, a little bit of topical humour there for the uh, those that pay attention. <laughs> yes. For those who don't pay attention, um, there is the you know the every year what happens in tabletop. Oh, he's he's going to try and shadow the leap hilariously. Um, what happens in tabletop? Oh, has he stripped him? Oh, and he's caught it as well. Okay, but yeah, the that's is, nice. Problem is, he's that's in nice no play. man's land. He's yeah, he's completely screwed because he's surrounded by an elf army. Yes. In fact, if anything, I think Kfo's come a bit too tight here. Yeah. Yeah. Just because of elf randomness, I'd have wanted a couple of elves midfield still. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah. But he wanted the foul, didn't he? Which is the foul. Out out it, so. where the pro receive it, and they're gone. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. always the worry against elves anyway, though, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so what happens in tabletop every year is there's a big tournament which is either the Euro Bowl or the World Cup, depending on which year it is, even though they're completely not affiliated with each other and nothing alike, as somebody said, but they're alike in that they're the big tournament for the year and all of the other tournaments kind of key off of their rules a bit. Well, not all of them, but a lot of the other tournaments key off of those rules a bit. So if those rules are absolutely mental, then uh, it's got a knock-on effect throughout the rest of the year yeah, as well. Yeah, firstly because it's the biggest tournament of the year, and secondly because a lot of players planning to go are interested in going to tournaments where they can practice their build for that tournament. Yeah. So it's a very natural process. Yeah. And the rules have been... To be fair, they've done a very good job of releasing them as a beta for people to look at and talk about, which is very good, isn't it? And, that's uh, ideal. Yeah, so that's great. So, you know, so hopefully they're open to wholesale changes. But generally, I feel like the basis of it isn't going to change, right? Like, basic, you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing, isn't it? The foundations aren't going to change. So I think they're going to want some of the things that they've got in. I'd imagine they'd, I would, wouldn't imagine they'd completely abandon everything in it to change it completely. But you never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, the problem is there are several very large structural problems with it. Um, one or two of which might be livable with, but there's sort of three or four right now. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Like, you know, even if you, you know, even if you do put lipstick on your pig, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, and you know they could they could make it a lot better than it is. Cause, but I, but you know, I, mean, I think it's I think it's being held back by the basis of it. I, I just don't think it's going to be acceptable to me. Um, but you know, that's okay, isn't it? I haven't got a Euro Bowl team. I haven't got a European team. It, um, it's fine. I mean, as you said, Jimmy, the big problem, I mean, anyone can choose not to go to Budapest. There's plenty of other you know, nice international tournaments you can go to uh, in other lovely countries, uh, which are run regularly and, you know, you know work well. So if it, if it isn't your cup of tea, there's other options. The problem is, as you said, there's lots of lots of tournaments that ape that rule set or something near to it. And there's a few races that really don't work in it, so it just means we're going to be a year or so till we see a lot of them. Um, and it's also just quite low on sort of skills and cash, just making all the teams a bit a bit basic. Yeah, it's really weird, right? Because so so is it a little history lesson here for people seeing this? Uh, you know, I know this is a, is a thrilling chalice game here. <laughs> yeah, in case anyone cares, anyone, anyone, anyone care? By the way, Kfo did go one nil up. Um, <laughs> he recovered the ball with a very very easily, uh, but there was no real option to stall it. I mean, there was, but it was probably better not to. You really need to anyway. Um, so we're into the second half, one nil up, and uh, 
he's received, there's some pressure in his backfield, but he has secured the ball and is now heading up the left flank to secure the game. Yeah, he has made a mistake of putting his sneaky get to it on one side, right? He should have had it in the middle yeah. so he could react to either yeah. way and foul the shit out of this catcher right now. The stripper, he wants to get rid of the stripper 100%, so... Yeah, now he's got to make the long journey over to foul him next turn. In fact, he's even done the GFI this turn, so he doesn't have to next turn. <laughs> if, he gets if he gets pushed back, he'll still be able to double GFI foul, so there you go. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, so, so long ago, in about 2003, or something like this, there was the Blood Bowl tournament at Games Workshop head office. And in that, you had a team, and it was, had some amount of gold, something like, you know, 100 and, uh, something like 110 um, gold. And then after each game, you gave a skill to a player. And then so it was like skilling up your players as the tournament went along, right? That was how it started. And so you ended yep. the tournament with five skills. And then, then, what, then the NAF came about at some point and then thought, you know, either before then or after then, they thought, oh, well, let's just not do this kind of mimicking a tabletop in front of getting a skill after each game. Let's just start with all the skills at once. And then they started with like six skills because there were six games, right? And then that's just that just happened so that there were six skills. And then it's just basically stayed like that for 20 years that you just have six skills as the, and, and, and that's like the foundation of tabletop. And then... Um, yes, years, I have played still a tournament where you get progressive skills. You start with two and then after two games you get two more. Mm. And then for the final two games of the six you got um, you know, two more skills, and there was even a little bit of tearing. So some of those skills were, you know, secondaries or, or doubles as they were back then, or slightly different skill packs if you were in different tiers. Um, which I thought was really interesting to try tearing and you know drip release skills all at once. Um, was really interesting. So some teams started out quite weak in the first couple of rounds, but by rounds five and six were looking real powerhouses. Mm. Um, so I really found that interesting, and I, to me that's where I would find variance. Um, rather than what they've done, but you know what they've done isn't necessarily terrible. Yeah. In terms of they, there's basically the, the big changes we're talking about is to sort of try and enumerate them. The first one is they're quite poor. The bills instead of 1150, most things are based around 1100 uh, or just over, which is making some races very difficult, like necromantic and corn and um, and pure ability. The expensive races are quite difficult to build rosters at that price. Yeah. The second thing they've done is allow most stars, even some mega stars, um, with a tax that seems very affordable, um, particularly for some of the really big ones on, say, the stunty teams. Um, because of the third big one, which is there's a cap of four maximum of the same skill. So even on stunties, like on gnomes, you can only put three dodge on. Yeah. So what are you doing with the rest of all your skills? Well, you may as well spend them on a really good star. And some very good ones are available. Wow, um, he's going for 4 plus handoff. Are you okay? Are you okay, Big Kev? I guess because he thought he was just going to get stripped, so he thought he'd yeah. hand off and run away. But isn't this well, I mean, tackle? With the reroll, that is a 1 in 4, and if you know, and you then run away and win the game. But instead, it's it's gone from a really solid position, which has crumbled a bit. I Did didn't he like how static he got. Oh, do you know what? Do you know what I reckon happened? I reckon he, he was just blocking. I reckon he was just blocking, ah. right? And then he's got the default set to handoff instead of move. So I reckon yeah. he just tried to block with that guy and handed off by mistake. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. <laughs> I like click that makes perfect move. sense because it does set the default to handoff. Yeah. 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 You are right. Yeah. Th this guy's got diamond tackle. Yeah. This guy's got diamond tackle. So like. Handing off to this guy, even if you think a four plus handoff is a good idea, you'd have to do a four you'd, plus. You'd, dodge. you'd still need to remove him before you went anywhere. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's it. No, that was a complete misclick. It's um, and it wasn't even that he was trying to. He was. He literally had selected the ball carrier and then was trying to select another player. Yes. Yeah. Before unselecting the ball carrier, wasn't it? That's yeah. the. That's the chain of doom there. Yeah. Poor big Kev. Oh, roll the one on the pickup though. Oh, the double wand! Oh my god, the snakes! The snakes for night! What are unbelievable! <laughs> like three critical snakes. That is incredible, but it's deciding this game right now. Really because is. that was his chance back in. Now, Kefo has to work very hard here. He's in a, still in a tough position. The ball is behind a screen of elves. Unfortunately, there's a way around that screen. 
Yeah, the only place to assist the block was to by picking up the ball, so he just went straight for the pickup with the edge one. Yeah, plus. on a three plus. I don't hate it, but as Two you said, plus. it left him on a diving tackle, meaning that the ball isn't going anywhere, it's staying exactly where it is. Yeah, this guy's got plus edge actually, so it was it was a two plus pickup. Um Okay. He just he just managed to roll a one. But yeah, yep. that was the play, wasn't it? Get in with him and then yeah, so yeah, have we got that actually. DP available to take out? He got that sent off. Fight. He got caught um, when he was He's fouling the caught, strip. Yeah, I might still throw a little foul. No, we can't because we have turned over. Mm. The stripper might be able to get there. Well, the assist's very easy. So from the ground, you can hit, or you can. No, we're blitzing just with a tackle piece. Okay, I mean. I don't think that's a good idea, but that's what we're doing. Well, and it hasn't worked. I don't know how hard it was to get there, but I would have tried to get there with him if it's possible. But if it wasn't possible, tackle's all right, isn't it? It's all right. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's still quite unlucky to have four dice with tackle and not get a power. Yep. To put it mildly. Yeah. This, um, <laughs> this has not been. This has not been Nat Virtue's game, has it? Mm. Why is it even fumble? Because it's it. Be, I'll tell you, real the real reason is it's crap to stream. Number one, it's just crap to stream. Yeah, um, it is. And then so I'm not going to play it without streaming it. And if I stream it, then I don't have music on and stuff because I'm streaming it. And then if I don't have music on, there's no, there's like it's not immersive in any way at all. Fumble like this, like the the this is and it may sound stupid but like basically the worst thing i think about fumble is that like the because there's no like music or sound or anything like it's just like really really weird and like it's like it's a really cold experience um so i just ch 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 oh. Doesn't doesn't do it for you. Not really, no, no. Like you know, like, see, you know, like you know, when you compare, like it's very Game Rose, Boy you know. immersive level, isn't it? That's, yeah. And that doesn't cut it for the moment. It really doesn't. No, it's funny that it's it's like I'm fine with the pixel graphics. It's just the uh, the sound is what you know. It's just the fact it's so empty. I, I'm not sure. I mean, Crystal would love it to be streamed, and you know, if his dream of the Unity client ever comes about, then perhaps it'll be a bit yeah. more streamable. It, it doesn't have that far to go, um, you know. Even a pseudo 3D fixed at something like this image, you know, this angle would be fine. But there it goes. You see, oh. one little mistake with the ball, and off it goes, and it's one-one. Bloody elves make you sick, don't they? They do. He's going to have a struggle to get this, isn't he? Can he He's even? Reach? Almost certainly not going to. I'd have thought. Yeah. Oh. oh, the blitzer can one D him and surf him. So. That's the well, and there's the power. But so, he's yeah. got no, he's got no rerolls though, has he? So it's uh, three two pluses. Core has never worried about rerolls. Well, God, Fox has got a dodge it, as well. Oh my god! If it's the right plan, he will do it anyway. But yeah, doesn't mean he won't put some sensible shielding in for when it fails. Oh, what a look at dog! <laughs> I love the sound effects. Yeah, I love the sound effects. They're like, there's there's one really bad one, isn't it, where they have some dude going, "Ooh, that's gotta hurt" or something. The <laughs> sound effects in all of gaming, I think you'll find. Okay. <laughs> but no, all the sound effects are great. Um, yeah. And that one was done to order to, of course, recreate one we weren't legally allowed to use. Anymore. Yes. Yeah. Which everyone missed. Yeah. I think I did a reasonable job of doing that. Very good, PC. Yep. It was, of course, a joke, and um, it was great, great sound effects. Um, but yeah, that's what I don't like, it's the lack of ambience. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, I, I've never seen it as necessarily a streamable product, if you know what I mean. Mm. I, I've always in my head had it that it's a computer playing a board game, <laughs> whereas this is a computerized version of that board game. And to me, that's, that's really quite different. Yes. But that, that might just be me. I mean, some people just see them, you know, both on the computer, both play the game. It is what it is. He snaked again! <laughs> wow! Oh, my God. He needs to borrow Core's dice, doesn't he? That's for sure. Oh, my God. I tell you what, at least, at least he can't feel bad that, like, he's misplayed or anything. Do you know what I mean? It's just being an absolute dicing, hasn't it? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, some games are not supposed to be. Jesus. Well, this is one of those. <laughs> so yeah, so that that's the thing about football. Yeah, but I mean, if I wasn't streaming it, yeah, you know, I just listen to girls aloud or whatever, and uh, 
And you know, I have I have done that. I have streamed it, look, just listening to music and stuff. But like, then obviously I can't put it on YouTube at all. And uh, and obviously it's not entirely good to play copyrighted music on stream. So I try not yeah, to good. just play for fumble at all. It's not really the copyrighted fact. It's the fact that Jim has the worst taste of all humans when it comes to music. <laughs> <laughs> he's allowed to put music he listens to on his YouTube so his fans will just leave in their droves <laughs> <laughs> I don't want fans if they're not fans of Girls Aloud god damn it <laughs> anyway there you go congratulations to KFOG the massive UI error was countered by the absolute just amazing the amount of snakes <laughs> abject dice absolute <laughs> abject dice of Nat Vatches yep. Nat Vatches um, Night Watcher. So, yeah, I mean, Core did what he needed to do, didn't play particularly well. His screening in the first half was good, putting all that pressure on the elves, which forced them into the, you know, tight turn, which led to the first snake. But from then, it was pretty much just a procession of terrible dice, together with someone competent facing them. Yes, yeah, yeah. KFOG wasn't at his best, but it didn't need to be, thanks to the unbelievable amount of snakes. So there you go, congratulations. Absolutely. KFOG gets the quarterfinals, and um, thank you, PC. It's been glorious having you in the booth. Love to be here. Wow. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.